Okay, good evening. I am officially live now, I think. <laughs> so y'all know how we start this. As Randy used to say, we have these red rags and we hold them over our head and we wave them around and we say, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <clears throat> and for those who are not familiar, these red rags represent the blood of Jesus. They're our prayer rags or our rally rags. And they are nothing but shop balls. There's nothing special or magic or anything about them. We just use them as a representation for praying for people. When we pray for somebody, we give them a rag or we give them a part of a rag. And uh, when they see that, they're reminded that they're being prayed for. Now, we also have all, we'd be glad to give you a prayer rag if you want it. And we've got little vials of oil that you're all also welcome to come get. And that oil is not magic either. It's just olive oil that I bought at the grocery store and poured in little vials. It represents the Holy Spirit. There's nothing magic about that oil. It just represents. And that's what we use it for, to help people remember. If you come in and want us to pray for you, we will. And if you will allow us to, we'll just put a dot of oil. We can put it on your forehead or on your hand. It just reminds you that people are praying for you. The Holy Spirit is what does the work, not that oil. Um, I, I have a friend who used some, I believe he used some Diet Coke one time when he was praying for somebody, and that it was what it represented. It wasn't what it was. So you use what you have to use. You do what you have to do, just like Miss Karen was saying earlier, that she used some baby oil to lubricate a piece of furniture. Well, it worked because that's what you needed at the time. So it's not anything magic about either of these things is what they represent but if you would like to please come by and get some <clears throat> and in saying that we love to take prayer requests if you um, have something you want us to be praying for you or with you about you of course we would love for you to come by the shop and let us pray for you in person but if you would prefer you can send it to me by text or by phone my cell phone number is 334-546-8312. You can call, text, however you want to do it. You can call the shop. That number is 334-335-2410. Or you can send it to us through the Facebook pages. Mine is listed as Beth McDaniel Rogers. Or you can send it to Living Water Coffee House. Or you can send it to 3-in-1 Motorcycle Ministries. I will get any of those. And there are other people that I've got that help me get that too. And we want to pray for you. You can mail it to us, 15 South Forest Avenue. I'll be here at the shop and we learn. We want to pray for you, but until you tell us what specifics you need, we don't know how to pray for you. I mean, we can pray for you, but we need to know specifics. So let us know how we can pray for you, and we will. And those prayer requests stay right here. We don't get out and tell them to everybody. We don't put them on Facebook. We don't put them on a website anywhere. They stay right here. They are between us and you and God until you get ready to share that story. And when you get ready to share it, then it's your story. You get to tell it the way you want to. Now, I will say this. When God answers your prayers, we want to know about that too because that encourages us and it encourages other people. So if we've been praying for you, with you, about something and you get an answer, please let us know so we can celebrate with you and praise God with you. Uh, even if it's not the whole answer, even if it's just part of it, you need to be praising God anyway. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, I had a preacher say one time, if you really want to drive God, try, excuse me, drive the devil crazy, praise God for the prayers he hasn't answered yet as if he's answered them. And then the, the devil either he thinks he's crazy or you're crazy, and either one of those is fine. So, but please let us know. We'd love to pray for you. Um, and in saying that, if you would like to make a donation of any kind, whether it's money to help operate the ministry, um, if you want to donate food or clothing or furniture or anything, anything that you want to donate, if you want to donate, I can write you a tax receipt because we are a 501c3. And if I don't immediately know somebody that can use it, I will get it in the hands of somebody that can get it in the hands of somebody that uses it. I don't have a lot of storage space personally, but I do work with other groups that do have storage space. Excuse me. So if you've got a house full of furniture you want, you want to donate, but we don't have anybody that needs it right this minute, they can put it up and hold it until somebody does need it. Um, 
There's several organizations that I work with that'd be glad to do that. Um, if you need Bibles, if you need a Bible, there I, I've said this before. There should be no reason for any person in Crenshaw County who wants a Bible not to have one. I've got a stack here. In fact, I've got some in the cabinet and some on the bookshelf. They may not be the latest, greatest, most expensive version of the Bible, but they are a Bible and they've got the important stuff in there. All the rest is bells and whistles. The Word of God is in there and that's what you need. If you need one or if you need several, please come and get them. I, I know people who keep Bibles in their vehicle and as they stop and talk to people, if the person needs one, they give it to them. Uh, lots of people fix up, they call them little goodie bags. It might have a $5 bill and a pack of baby wipes and maybe a, some packs of crackers or peanuts or something like that. Just a little something to let somebody know that they're thinking about them that might get them through to the next place they need. So if you need Bibles, please come and get them. If you've got Bibles that you're not using, maybe the print is too small or maybe it's a version that you no longer enjoy reading. If you're not using it and you don't, and I'm not going to say that you don't want it, but if you're not using it, Please let us have it, and we or somebody else let somebody else have it, so that they can it can get into the hands of somebody that can use it. Um, I'm not the only. This church is not the only church that will give give out Bibles. Any church in the county would be glad to give somebody a Bible if they need one. So if you need one, please go get one. Come see me, or come go see any any other pastor in Crenshaw County, and or really any Christian in Crenshaw County. If they don't have an extra Bible, I bet they know somebody that does. And we will make sure that you get one if you need one. Now saying that, the newsletters go out tomorrow. I've got to, all I've got to do is go by the post office and finish getting enough stamps. Uh, we mail those out once a month. If you would like to be added to the mailing list, all I need is your name and mailing address. They don't cost you anything. We just we mail them out. It's a just back in front of a legal size sheet of paper and it's got we I usually put a recipe in it I have devotions from different people um, usually put a little humor in there there's information about upcoming events um, so if you'd like to have one we'd be glad to send it to you I send them out once a month um, and speaking of the newsletter and upcoming events I wanted to remind y'all we have Bible study here every Tuesday night at 6 o'clock Every Saturday night, we either have Bible study or a game night or a uh, family movie night. And um, this month, the family movie night is going to be a, on the second Saturday, which is, I believe this coming Saturday, is um, family game night. I think that's correct. And then the fourth Saturday night is movie night. Um, we watch different movies. They're all family friendly. Anybody can come. Neither one of them costs anything. If you're coming to game night, just bring a dish, whether it's potato chips and dips or a bag of cookies or soft drinks or something. Bring something to share so that we can all, all of us can have something. And we just sit and eat. It's, some nights it's just nuts and chips and dips. And some nights we have pizza and some nights we have sandwiches. It's just whatever anybody wants to bring. It's just, just a night of fun. We play games. We're here from about six. We've stayed as late as 10, 30, or 11 before, just when we get ready to go. You don't have to be here at 6, but that's when it starts. And the same way with movie night, it doesn't cost anything. We just want you to come. Now, I do sell popcorn. I make popcorn in my maker and sell it, but that's just a fundraiser. If you want to bring your own snacks from home, that's fine. I don't mind. I don't want anybody not to come because they think they can't afford it. It's not going to cost you anything. If the kids want to come and bring a pillow and a blanket, I, they... Usually the kids gather up here in the floor and the screen is on this wall behind me and the adults sit in the chairs and some of the kids sit in the floor and we all have a good time. In fact, I think most of the time the adults get more out of it than the kids do because the kids are busy playing and talking and laughing and everything. But we have a good time. It's a lot of fun. Um, I don't think there seems like there might be something else. Um, I think that's all the events for this upcoming month. I've told y'all about Bible study. Um, of course, we have church on Sunday nights at 6 right here at the shop. We do prayer requests. We pray over prayer requests before we get started. And we have 
made made it a purpose of ours to pray for different churches in the community. We take one church every Sunday night and we pray for them. And uh, I saw somebody talking about that on Facebook, and I thought, you know, there's not a lot that this little small ministry can do, but we can sure pray for somebody. And uh, I think it's important that we do that. Don't think of that as the last thing you do. Think of that as the first thing you do, and then if you can do something else as well, but always pray for people. Um, I believe I believe that is I believe that's it. Um, I don't see anything else. We don't have any uh, big events coming. Um, we will be joining. Normally, we have uh, Easter sunrise services here. But I've decided that we're going to join with another church Easter morning. It's a lot of work, and it's hard to it's hard to know how many people are coming. We always serve breakfast, but this year I think we're just going to join with another church and celebrate with them because that's what it's about. We need to celebrate Easter, and um, so find a church that's having sunrise services and join them. It's you you you'll be amazed how blessed you will be. But I believe Easter is coming up in is it two weeks? Two weeks from today. Or three weeks. That's what I was thinking. Two weeks. I'm, I'm getting the peace sign right there. <laughs> so, with saying that, that's all the announcements. Brother James Rhodes has got a message for us, and I'm going to let him come up here and speak. So, Brother James, you just come on up here and tell us what we need to know. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, there we go. We got it. Come on. You just come on around whichever way you want to. All right. How we do? All right. Before we get started, it'll be in Mark chapter 14. We're going to talk about who can touch him. Mm. Who can touch Jesus? Who's allowed to worship him? Mm. Let me tell you how this message came to be. I follow the church and, and Beth on Facebook. And there's been some squabble, if you will, back and forth about tattoos. Well, Every year about this time, this is the week of, of Passover. And uh, one of the first sermons I had to do, a trial sermon, uh, going in the Methodist church, came from this passage of Scripture. Mm. Uh, I've always been the person that would root for the underdog. Mm -hmm. That's my nature. Mm -hmm. And I knew when this began to stir it in my spirit that I would be coming here. You and I hadn't talked. Right. We'd been on vacation trying to, to rest and get some time away and just relax. Cancer plays a lot on the mind. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you just need to get away and de-stress, if you will. Absolutely. Look at Mark chapter 14. This is the anointing at Bethany. Okay. It said, After two days was a feast of Passover and unleavened bread. And the chief priest and the scribe saw out how they could take him by craft and put him to death. But they said, Not on the feast day, lest there be our roar. Verse 
Uh, verse 3, Mark 14, verse 3. It said, And being in Bethany, in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at meat, there came a woman. That would be Mary Magdalene. Isn't it strange how they can't even give the woman a name? Mm. They all know her by her sin, mm. but they don't know her by her name. Right. Religious people will do that to you, by the way. <laughs> they will know you by your sin, mm -hmm. but they don't know you by your name. Absolutely. But she came. She came because she knew that Jesus would be there. In the house of Simon the Leopard, as he said to me, there came a woman having an alabaster box of ointment, a spikenard, very precious, and she broke the box and poured it on his head. And there were some that had indignation, meaning they had something to say. Their spirit was troubled. A little bit of anger in them, if you will. They had something to say. They had nothing to do, but they had something to say. Mm -hmm. You ever notice that? Mm -hmm. yeah. Somebody's going to have the final word. We'll get there in a minute. Within themselves and said, Why was this waste of the ointment? They thought what this woman done was a waste. They had no value. They saw no value in the woman or her actions. I've been through that over the years, folks. Mm. When I first started in ministry. Well, why is it you not pastoring a church? I said, I don't even know God's coming. Well, we can't believe you've been at it five or six years. I said, it's up to God. That's right. That's Number exactly. one. They were trying to force a call on me. I, I'll just be honest with you, church. My real heart's not in pastor. My real heart has always been doing what I do right now, speaking. Mm -hmm. I'm an encourager. My gift is helps, church. I'm supposed to be the helper to the preacher. Mm. And that's, that's what I function in. And I discovered something recently. If you move out from under your calling, you wonder what happened to the anointing? I now know what happened. I moved too way, too far away from the calling. Just trying to please folks. Mm -hmm. mm. uh, here it is. This woman. She comes with this alabaster box of very precious ointments, spikenard. And there's a story behind that. Spikenard is very, very costly. The reason it was in this alabaster box, if you will, is because the alabaster box was so hard. It was made from limestone that was in the area. Mm. But that spikenard was so precious so costly that it had to be protected. Mm -hmm. So she brought it. They all want to put their value on her worship. Oh, it could have been sold for 300 pence. Give to the poor. Let me tell you something, church. No one should value you worship but you and God. Yes. It should be an individual thing between you and God. And she brought it. And she came. And in the midst of a crowded house, a lady that they said was a harlot has taken hold of the very feet of Jesus. She knew that He was there. She knew the time was at hand where He would go to a cross and die to pay for her sin. And she was there for one purpose to anoint him for his burial. She didn't let the actions of others stop her from doing her mission. She was there to take hold of his feet. 
That's the place of worship, taking hold of his feet. But this alabaster box had to be broken. It was very tough, if you will, because it was presenting something very precious. She broke it, and the ointment filled the room. Mm. Your worship fills the room. It's very costless. It's very precious. It said, For it might have been sold for more than 300 pence and been given to the poor. And they murmured against her. They had something to say against her. There's folks that are always going to be murmuring about something. You just need to let it go. Just just pour it out at his feet and let it go. Mm. And Jesus said, and Jesus said, Jesus is going to have the final say, church. Yes, that's right. And Jesus said, you can't say, oh, that's Brother James preaching now. And Jesus said, let her alone. That ought to be the end of it right there. Well, who can touch it? Whoever has a heart's desire to touch it. Jesus had to tell Peter once in that vision with the sheet that came down, Peter said, Not so, Lord, not me. He was going to call common what God has called clean. We've got to quit calling folks common. If the hand of God has come upon them, they're a child of God, the work of God's being wrought out in their heart and their life, and we need to just to leave them alone and let them worship God. We want to catch our fish or clean our fish before we catch it. Look. Let the Holy Spirit do His work. Now, I came up in an age, you know, military, don't have one tattoo. Why? I despise people. <laughs> uh, it just isn't me. I mean, come up, driving a truck, uh, no tattoos or nothing like that. You know, it just isn't me. But you know what? It didn't make me any better than you. What you need to realize is this. Oftentimes, I met this one lady, and I thought she had the prettiest little tattoo. It was around her ankle. It was little baby boobies. I mm -hmm. guess that's what you call them. Mm -hmm. The little tiny shoes. Or so. They looked like shoes. And it had the date and then under it it had a black ribbon mm. and I asked her I said if you don't mind me asking she said yeah she said that was my babies that I lost mm. she said I made them a promise I'll never leave you nor forsake you mm -hmm. she said they go with me everywhere I go mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I thought how foolish I was to, to question why you would have a tattoo mm -hmm. I mean very attractive but she said, that's fine. Mm -hmm. We never know folks. That's right. Mm. There's a lot of veterans out there. They have tattooed because they're remembering service members. Yes. But is they lost in their battle. Jesus said, But well, Jewish tradition said this. Jesus came into the home. This home. He was never once was received. He never once was greeted. There was no, no kiss, no hug, no ceremonial greeting, if you will. No one anointed his head with oil. No one brought a cloth, a cool towel to cleanse his feet. 
you know, they had walked open toe shoes, his feet were hot and dusty. But this woman, she took it upon herself mm -hmm. to wash his feet with her tears <coughs> yes. and to dry <coughs> her hair. But yet they wanted to, to scold her about tradition. They said of Jesus, if he was truly a man of God, <coughs> he would know. He would know who it is that's touching him. He put a stop to it. He either lacks wisdom or true holiness. But one way or the other, he can't be much of a man of God. But church, he was. Yes. He knew who had hold of him. You know what? He didn't stop her because he knew the motives of her heart. She was there crying out for forgiveness, saying, Lord, I'm sorry. I just come to let you know, Lord, I haven't forgot what you've done in my life. That's why I'm bringing this partner. I'm here to honor your, your memorial. I'm here in preparation of your death because I believe in everything you said mm -hmm. and I know who it is that set me free. So who it is, who is it that can take hold of him? We used to preach a gospel, whosoever will. Mm -hmm. What happened to the gospel is still whosoever will. You and I are not the judge. At the last day, we won't stand before us, they'll stand before him. Mm. One thing I, I keep telling people is this. I am so thankful for that experience at the hospital because through all of that, boy, I gained a freedom about worship. That man, you can worship him any time of the day or night mm -hmm. in the hospital with cancer with not a whole lot of hope you can put your trust in him yes you can still touch him and look through all this i didn't been picture perfect you know i got discouraged i gave up there for a little while i got so tired of fighting this cancer i think that's just human nature boy. Mm -hmm. but brother Steve and others and prayers and my walk with God I had to get back it's easy to become weary and well do but he said if we don't faint don't become weary and well do because we'll reap if we faint not yes mm -hmm. But Jennifer, if you're listening, and others, bikers, if you're listening, there's a place up here with open doors. Come as you are. That's right. Because that's who Jesus is. He's a friend of sinners and publicans. Come as you are. And we'll receive you. Yes. Just as you are. Because you know what? I remember the day he received me just as I was. Mm -hmm. uh, if you want to come and close the south, sister. I will. Thank you. That was very good, and it was very timely. I, uh, Brother James is referring to a post I made on Facebook a couple of weeks ago, for those of you who didn't see it. Um, I, I saw a post that was basically accusing someone one with tattoos of not being a, being a lady or a gentleman. And it, it hurt me because I have so many people in my family and my circle of friends who have tattoos or who have piercings. Now, Ms. Doris and I talked about it at lunch, and, and our, Ms. Doris's neighbor, I don't want a piercing in my tongue because I'm afraid it's going to mess my teeth up. But that's my choice. But I'm not going to look down on somebody else who does. If that's what you want, as long as you're not harming yourself, different people express themselves in different ways, and God sees all of us the same. And it just hurt me so bad. So that's what Brother James is talking about, the fact that I was saying that 
you know, there's a lot of wonderful people out there, and just because you have tattoos or piercings or whatever doesn't make you a bad person. God loves you just like he does everybody else. So um, that that's what he was referring to. But I thank you, Brother James, for coming and bringing that message. It was very good, as always. Thank you for coming. And I want to remind those of you who are watching, if you are not positive that you were saved, there's a very easy way to make sure. You can come see me. You can come see my mother-in-law. There's not a, a Brother James, Sister Karen, Bob is here. Any person that you know that is a Christian, go talk to them. And if they are not co confident enough to help you themselves, they will get you to somebody that can help you make sure. Because that's not a decision you want to leave up to chance. You want to make sure. You want to make sure. I don't want anybody to go to hell. And that's one of those choices that you have to make yourself. I can't make it for you. I don't want to talk you into it because it's like I was saying earlier. If I can talk you into deciding that, somebody else can talk you out of it. It's got to be your own personal choice and decision. You've got to make it from your own knowledge and your own heart. So if you're not sure, please come see, come talk to somebody and get sure. And um, saying that, I appreciate y'all joining with us tonight. <clears throat> we would love to have you come join us in person if you can, if it's where you can. But if not, we're glad that you join us on Facebook. Uh, I load, excuse me, I load these videos up on YouTube. We have a YouTube channel, Three in One Motorcycle Ministries. And the link is on the Facebook page. So you can go back and watch these videos. You can also go back and watch them on Facebook. I'm assuming Facebook leaves them all up, but they, they do get put on YouTube just for that purpose. Please come and see us. The coffee shop is open every day except Thursday, and we're here from about 7.30 to about 1.30, and yes, we sell coffee, and yes, we sell soft drinks and snacks and other stuff, but the reason we are open is to share Jesus. The other stuff is just a reason to draw people in. Um, we want somebody to come in if they need a cup of coffee and we're going to talk to you and make you feel welcome. If you want to talk about Jesus, we can. It's not all we talk about, but it's a part of what we talk about because Jesus is a part of us. And that's the reason that we're up here. If I was just up here to sell coffee, I would have quit in six months. Because this, I mean, yes, I, I have customers all through the week, but it's not enough to keep this place open for that. But it's enough to keep it open because we're sharing Jesus, and that's why we're here. So we would love to have you come join us, look around, get to know us a little bit. I think you'll have a good time. We, we talk about a little bit about everything and, and about nothing, but through it all, we talk about Jesus. So come see us, and we will, as Brother Steve likes to say, we will treat you so many ways you're bound to like some of them. <laughs> So come see us when you can, and thank you for joining us tonight, and we will see you next week.